<laughs> hey, welcome to On The Chain. This is Jeff here with co-host Chip. What's happening, Chip? Good to see you on. Once again, it's been like 24 hours. In the yeah. last 24 hours, Chip, Larson has declared war on Bitcoin. Bitcoin maximalists are rising up. And I think we're going to see kind of an all-out conflict between the XRP and the Bitcoin maxis. I'm not sure exactly that's accurate, but we're going to discuss that anyways. What do you think of that, Chip? I like it. There's a lot of things to unpack. So let's go. Welcome to On The Chain. On The Chain. Welcome, everybody. Bitcoin on the chain. maxis going wild. Yeah, let's everybody drop where you're from. Country, city, drop it now. Drop it like it's drop hot. It drop it like it's and, hot. And uh, if you're on the rewatch, we love to see it in the comments. We like to see where everybody's right. coming in from because it's always a great deal. And, you it's know, Jeff, cool. I, the last few days have really given me a lot of pause. I mean, I, I, just, pause. I just don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm really thinking to myself, when people ask, how did we get here? The kind of idiocy and stupidity that I see on crypto Twitter sums it all up. You just got <laughs> That's it. That's all you have to do is take a look at it because one of the things that's null and void of critical mm -hmm. thinking. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's like, critical Jeff, I like candy. Like, uh, I like candy. You like the same kind of candy I like? I like I uh, coffee like? crisp from don't Canada. Like nope. A, one of the greatest chocolate bars in the world, coffee crisp from Canada. Do you like it, Jeff? I don't. Okay, then you better rally against me because God I'm forbid. So that's like so basically I'm that's not a like, big fan of the coffee coffee crispers. Don't well, like them. Coffee crisp like is the those. name of the candy bars. Don't one like of the greatest candy bars coffee crisp ever invented. So that's like two percent of like what I believe in, <laughs> and the rest of it is a socialist nut job, a leftist agenda, and right. uh, you know that that's pretty much what it is. But you said you didn't like my candy, Jeff. So I mean. I don't. If I'm a politician, you might as well vote me out because God forbid you didn't like my candy. Doesn't matter that I may have done some I'm really do it amazing even worse. things. I'm going to call you out on Twitter. You might have to do that too. That's exactly. I'm going to create a meme. I'm going to create a meme of your passion for the coffee crisps. Crisps. By the way, does anybody know coffee crisp? It is honestly to this. It's don't one of the greatest candy bars. Well, you know who they sells it? Like Public Twix. sells it, Jeff. No, oh, Jeff. Yeah. This makes no. This is just. It's, well, I'm it's saying a, in that genre. Is it in the kind of the genre of a Twix? Like the, no, because it's a, a, it's a thick bar. Like it's a, a th Kat. Yeah, I would say more akin to a Kit Kat, but it's a thick bar. It's got multiple layers in there of chocolate, just delicious goodness. Chip, overall, American chocolate kind of sucks. Yes, it does. Well, not, that's there. There are some good dark American chocolates. The dark ones. The the that's the only ones that I like. Dark when ones, you get little into, sugar. Like, the craft. Craft dark the craft chocolate stuff. They're general, not the stuff the you see in the stores. Yeah, it's good. Maybe one day at one point it was really nice, but now Hamilton says all, cancel him. Cancel. So I'm right off the bat, cancel him. Matt, we've already got it organized. It's already been can I've already been canceled. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. I appreciate <laughs> that. I've already been canceled. Canceling, see, we're canceling that coffee crisper. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Twenty one grams of coffee beans and thirty three hundred fifty grams of water. See, there you go. So, yeah, you know, that's Boom. The, But everyone's gone a little bit crazy over on crypto Twitter, Jeff. I'm just saying. I mean, people are going nuts. K HUD's got the coffee stick. Got the coffee stick. I want the hockey no. stick that goes like this with crypto. <laughs> that's what I want. The, the hockey stick. I would stick. like that too. Why doesn't everyone shout out what kind of candy they like? And let's How see. How do we get uh, in this stupid conversation anyway? It must have been me. <laughs> I must have started it. But my Don't point like is, is that. Bears. What are your thoughts on gummy bears? I think gummy bears are addictive, Jeff. They really are. I mean, especially those big ones, those bigger size ones. They, I mean, I'm not much of a candy guy, but I do like, I even like those nerds. They're kind of soury. Hmm. Can't eat a lot of them because they're like sugar mixed with that sour taste, which can be, uh, which can be a little bit much. Yeah, I think you've got uh, mats on your side. Never heard of the coffee. Coffee. Chris, oh, but that Matt. sounds good. Man, I'm telling you, man, is one of the thing. The thing about it is our local store here, uh, down here in South Florida, public sells them, Jeff, in the international section. 
They actually have mm. the they have them they have the big coffee trays. They have the regular bar and they got the massive bars. They yeah, also sell if it's the same. They also sell the British, uh, the UK stuff over there too. It's like a little tiny section. It's kind of embarrassing. I'll be honest with you. But however, still the... what is what is the uh, the British chocolate Cadbury? So the Cadbury that you get in the U.S. is made by Hershey's. It's not unless the same. you go to the British store. If you go to the British store, then it's from England. But the Cadbury that's made by Hershey's, 100, percent like you just said, not the and, same. And the it's one they the have on chocolate. what's what's the one they have in San Francisco? The big letters Giordelli's. Oh, Giordelli's. Giordelli. Yeah, that's some of the Giordelli's is pretty decent. Lint, that's good. good Lint is Lint. Chocolate. Like I said, the Lint dark chocolate is phenomenal. Hans. Yeah. Without a doubt, the lint is fantastic. You know what I chocolate. like? There was a chocolate. Uh, it's an Israeli chocolate. It's like a milk chocolate, and they put hazelnuts in it. Outstanding. Ugh. What's that hazelnut? Those little hazelnut things. I think they're from. Are they from Switzerland? Some over there in Europe. Mm. They're just Man. delicious. They're hazelnut. Mm, they got the chocolate. little crispy stuff in there. How do we get on this conversation? But anyway, I wanted to go. I want to jump in this uh, first first order of business. Let's just kind of jump a little bit through this. Then we're going to unpack that stuff on crypto Twitter, which is. Same before we we'll get there. K HUD Valente salted Ooh. caramel gelato. Oh, wow. Dude, gelato is amazing. You gotta love gelato. Gelato gelato's great. Actually, in San Francisco, there's, I've had amazing gelato. Yeah, there's a place in Hollywood. If you get down to Hollywood, there's a gelato place. There's one, I forget what it's called, but this one, it's kind of closer to the railroad tracks across from the axe throwing its own by is an it Italian next to, family. It's outstanding. Jeff. Oh my is God. it next to Geppetto's or no? Am I getting that wrong? Right next to Geppetto's. Geppetto's Take a left at Geppetto's. Right. Take a left at Geppetto's. Geppetto's. And you'll get right straight to the gelato. <laughs> Geppetto's. Geppetto. Oh it's God. right next to... Oh, this is what I was thinking of. The Ferrero Rocher, whatever you say that. That's the one I was thinking about. That right there is absolutely amazing. You got Big Turk, <laughs> Wonder Bar, Crawfee Crisp. I'm not really yeah. big into candies, though. I don't know. Not I don't either, really but I'm telling you, there are some good ones, Jeff. There are some good we ones. said it, Hollywood. Hollywood. From um, New York to Hollywood. How many people are here from Michigan tonight? Shout out. Why don't you guys shout out your area codes? That's fun, too. See how many area codes we got rolling around in here. How about that, Chip? Are we going to get into crypto tonight? <laughs> uh, we, we are going to get into it. Right We're like about, 30 minutes in. Talking yeah, about, about now. Yeah, chocolate. Chocolate. So Chocolate. this this one here. So James Filan put this out that Ripple's request for extra time regarding the redacted documents was granted in a text order. Uh, the SEC is directed to produce the redacted documents. This text order is not related to the Hinman emails with the 52 drafts or the Estabrook notes. Something that we've been waiting for. That's not that. And then we have the... Is that the one I was looking for? Or is this the one? Here we go. What date is this one, Jeff? Oh, that's an older one. Let's looking for the newest one. one. Yeah, there's one right here. So, yeah, is this one? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so followed up on that. This letter explains what the SEC wants to redact. Why is this the 23rd? All right, Chip. So if you win here, man. 8675309. I love that. You just win, man. You win. You win. You just win. It's over. You it's done. You just won. Everyone go home. You won. <laughs> Everybody leave. That's it. Why are these tweets? Did you find unordered? it? Did you find the tweet? I did, but these are like old tweets, and I'm like, I don't know why. Yeah, we got the wealthy brand coming in from Bristol, UK. There you go. No, quite a few, quite a few people now from Bristol. And there you have it. That goes. Isn't that where? Yeah. And Gary Gensler is not here. Not sure what happened. When are we talking about XRP? What do you I'm got? Talk about in a second, but I want to see this one. So John Deaton said he's going, and uh, in, in light of all the crypto for. infighting, especially today, <laughs> which says, I figured that if you can't beat him, join him. And I became a maxi. I just ordered a t-shirt to wear at the Bitcoin conference, crypto maximalist. You know what? I like it. That's I the like way to it. do it. And there's your three top cryptos. You got the Bitcoin, the Ethereum, and XRP. There you go. That's strong, don't you think, Jeff? That is a really strong shirt. Now, where where do we get that shirt? That is the question. I don't know. It kind of looks like someone just made it. And um, also, do t we also want to give a Photoshop. big super shout out? Happy birthday, the legendary! No, 
So happy birthday oh, to happy. none other than Crypto Eddie. She's her Crypto birthday. Eddie. Yep, there she is right there. So that's her and Moon Chaser. Uh, uh, happy every birthday, time Crypto Eddie. Are in full bloom. It's a nice reminder that your special day. Thank you for all you do in our space. We appreciate you so wow. much nice. and your happy day. So everybody, big shout out to oh, Crypto Eddie. She's fantastic. So there you go. They're enjoying like a nice a restaurant. Nice, Let's a little rosé there, Jeff. Maybe they're having some rosé. Hmm. People seem to like that rosé. Not a not a big fan of the rosé. No, I'm not. Or the whites. You got to go right for the for the cab, Jeff. Right for the good. But you hey, it's your nice, birthday. You get a mile back. You get a nice mile back. There's some nice Bordeaux. Yeah, Bordeaux are good too, yeah. Now we're getting into wine conversation, Jeff. Let's hey, become the foodies. <laughs> By the way, my my youngest daughter is the foodie in this thing. So I said, you know, I'm thinking about something new. We go to all the places. What are you thinking about, Pop? I'm thinking about this. Okay, a new place just opened around the corner. Check that out. I go check it out. It's the greatest place ever. Hmm. I go, have you been there? And she's like, no. I just, uh, my friends go there and they report back. Okay. So meanwhile, I got to get, I got to get to the duck at some point. I don't know how that's going to. The duck. Happen. The duck. We got to go to the duck, Jeff. I'll meet it's you at the duck. It's a complete dive bar. It's com it's it's just a horrible, oh, yeah, beautiful we haven't seen organic fud for a long time. Oh. Oh, now we got some truly organic fud coming in here. Ripple and the SEC <laughs> are on the same team. This is all a show. Normally, in situations like these, people uh, like us lose, but let's hope this time is different. Ripple paid Gensler at MIT. There you go. There's some organic fud. Yeah. Organically produced, organically driven. Say All what? Right. There's no such thing as pink wine. Yeah, I must have to add the color. Issues. <laughs> so, another news. Red in there. Man. So, Coindesk, you know, Coindesk, they're one of the bigger publications out there in crypto. They put this tweet Never out. And let's see if we can decipher it together. Ripple is a San Francisco-based tech company, check, that developed the decentralized XRP current cryptocurrency. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, that was developed. Uh, that was OpenCoin. But anyway, uh, that being said, uh, while the well, two are naturally linked, they should be thought of as two distinct entities. Well, yeah, Jeff, that's true. Wouldn't you know that the way crypto Twitter has been going after they got four thousand replies of the F and the U put together and everything else, they had to issue this correction. <laughs> oh XR my God. XRP predated Ripple's formation, though they were founded by the same people as now prominently noted in this explainer for the crypto curious. Uh, SEC uh, claims the coin is an unregistered security. The firm sold in violation of federal law. Ah, well, there you go. Now they issued their correction. They've put their statement out. And K HUD said ACDC, I got big. You know what that is, Jeff. Yeah. Yep. That's, That's you know, a great tune, by the way. Falls. Yes. Yeah. Exactly what it is. And then there's this article here. It's like, well, what is oh, Ripple yeah. and the XRP cryptocurrency? It's like a five year old would ask, what is Ripple and the XRP cryptocurrency? Despite the project's yeah, long history, one. many are confused how Ripple and XRP are related. That, that Fort well, many, Myers. Well, many aren't. Fort Myers with a with a with the with a mountain. Nine four one, right? Nine four one is Fort Myers. It might be. I thought you meant was on screen. I was like, there's mountains in there. Anyway, so they put this out. How does it work? You know, it's like one of these things. They look if people are searching, and it gets enough. Uh, Google juice and it will direct people here and pros and cons. Uh, What's in there? Are we reading it? No, Go I don't think we need it. to read it. No, I don't think we need to go through it. It's just uh, just the article itself. Pros and cons. Although it's open nature blockchain to decentralize its bookkeeping, keep transactions transparent. XRP is more centralized than Bitcoin or Ethereum and that no public entity or person outside of Ripple can determine the issuance. I think they mean decentralized. And I think they're getting it all, all wrong. Earth work, Earth worth is saying what the actual F coin desk, you're embarrassing yourself. What? It's like if you're going to write an article, at least do a little bit of your own research. Try to figure things out. Right. What do you say? Is that the case? Yeah. We come I come in here so. and just kind of pontificate on stuff. But those guys are actually writing articles. 
I don't know what's wrong with them, Jeff. I really don't. I don't either. Problematic on a few different levels. You know who likes rosé wine is Sir John. Sir Does John he? loves rosé wine. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. I don't think he All does. Right, let's, uh, let's go to the keep. Let's turn to the keep. Let's talk something. Oh, wait a minute, Jeff. Hang on a second. I must have read that wrong because apparently it's been fixed. XRP is more decentralized than Bitcoin or Ethereum. See that right there? There you go. Oh, I nice. just fixed it. So there you go. It's more it to their editorial board. Their editorial board listened and they made the correction. So, but they do have it wrong. No days. public enemy. See, that's why I didn't even gate. You don't even embark on reading an article like this because it's going to be wrong all over the place. In a Contra sense, I guess you could say that XRP was more centralized than Bitcoin or Ethereum, mainly because it was all mined at the same time. But then, is it really more centralized if you have all the mining is controlled by a small percentage of groups? I don't know, Jeff. The whole thing is the whole thing is suspect know, for me. Did they even talk about the XRP ledger in this article? Mm, no. Oh, look at that. No, there you not. go. Did they bring there it, it is up? right there? Yeah. XRP Lab. Let's see. Open source public blockchain oh, first created in 2011 by Arthur Brito, Jed McKayla, David Schwartz saw the inefficiency of Bitcoin. Oh, I'm mm. sorry, cross border remittance and payments, traditional banking. Serves as the, the this is the whole part they're missing is why it's, it's decentralized. But anyway, all right, that's all we have for that. I mean, you man, throw that up there once like, in a while. What, like the man? Come on now. Come on. Hans man. is saying that's not Hans. That's John Doe Crypto, Jeff. Come on. Hans oh, there's is Hans. saying Chip looks like his vegan diet is shaving some pounds. I have lost some weight. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you for all noticing. Right. I have lost a little bit of weight. I. The, the pandemic weight. So I Tony, what's going on, Tony? What is up, Tony? Tony just had and JW on. JW, and JW gave nice. it to our pal Daddy G, which was brilliant. By he the did. way, how was that interview? I saw a little bit. It was pretty good from what I saw. Nice. But again, you know, it's time is a little. Tony, bit. how was it interviewing? That's an interesting one. How was it talking to JW? That's what I would like to know. And other all right, do we have anything else? News? Get into Thank something you. uh controversial. Oh wait, like wait, wait, wait. we got a hold for that. Oh, straight into poly sign. No, I wanted to talk about I wanted to get into this right talk here. Bitcoin. Talk about Vietnam. No, that's we'll Vietnam talk about that too. But the head uh so Susan Freeman, who is the head of public policy at Ripple. She put this out right here, which I think she's making a pretty good case here, Jeff. Let's let's see. She Hold said, it. while we don't agree with everything the EU policymakers are advocating for, the proposed revision to the transfer of funds regulation being a prime example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they're certainly moving faster to set regulatory guardrails for crypto assets than their U.S. Mm -hmm. counterparts. Check. That's a good point. Nice. Good job. Markets and crypto assets regulation, which reg which creates a harmonized legal framework for crypto assets in the European Union, is likely to pass by the end of 2022 and go into force by 2023. By comparison, the U.S. will just be completing the reports called for in the recent <laughs> Biden executive order. <laughs> that sounds like a joke, Chip. It, well, it sounds is, Jeff, like a joke. Because it is, I'm Jeff. <laughs> reports. <laughs> because it uh, is. Yeah. Uh, Imagine that you have to do this via an executive order. I mean, you know, they're, they're getting to a point where it's it's kind of ludicrous. And, and the executive order didn't even have any real teeth to it. You know, it's basically that, hmm. hey, why don't you guys get together, you know, write a report. And we'll look over that report in 2020. And do nothing. Sometime and uh, we'll do nothing about it. Because <laughs> uh, when you task uh, yeah. the government to do something. Yeah. You've already made a large, you've already made a, a judgment and error. You've already gone off the rails. It's, I don't care what Man. government entity, which party you like, it doesn't matter. It's all going to be just a ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So, so Jim D is asking, do you think our wacky government will try to follow the EU to force KYC global ID private wallet apps? That's a, uh, an interesting uh, conundrum. You want to take that Jeff? 
trying to, I'm, I'm really trying to think through, you know, what that would look like. So November, we're going to have a major turnover within the house and the Senate. Um, so I would say probably no, um, at this point. Um, but the EU is also, you know, pushing for, and they're a little more ahead of the curve on regulatory clarity for the crypto space. But I think that that KYC global ID apps, you know, are a little bit um, too uh, government oversight. What do you What are your thoughts? I think that if government has its way, they will. They will. They would love to take everyone's face and slam it into the concrete as hard as they possibly could. So when you ask me, is this stuff possible? Oh, it's possible. But like, I would like to remind everybody on crypto Twitter, if you're wondering why things are the way they are, I'm going to point to you because you created it. That's why are you right. Pointing at me? Not you necessarily, Jeff. But I'm just saying. <laughs> just like, I'm just pointing to the people out there. It's just like. The, the lunacy that's going on in crypto Twitter today and all the infighting and all this stuff, the very thing we used to, the, in the XRP community used to rally against the Bitcoiners called on the maxis. Are we becoming the same? I mean, what happened to all, and the whole idea, chip, that's what I've always said, like Bitcoin is the first crypto I've ever held, held. I still hold Bitcoin. Ethereum, yes. Check. Multiple assets. What is this whole, there's only, you can only be one. This isn't Highlander, man. It's not like there can only be one. Hmm. So the whole thing is, yeah, the wacky government is right, but it's every government. It's not just every government is wacky. Remember, government doesn't make every. anything. They only take. They don't make, they take. Debt implosion, debt implosion, debt implosion. So anyways, this is sort of the, uh, what I love about this in a weird way, Jeff, is that, well, and I'll talk about it a little bit, but I want to get in this so she says serious risk. consideration, okay. All right. serious consideration of the uh, legislative proposals that have been put forth in Congress is the best way to ensure the U.S. does not fall behind in the cryptocurrency asset space and remains mm -hmm. competitive with the European Union, as noted in my recent letter. So this is her letter, and again, it's editor. great. Yeah, it was it was uh, published in the Times. Financial Times, good publication. Nice. Uh, and Susan Friedman had a policy Ripple London EC2 UK. Hmm. And so she yeah, just came in on that text total. Well, she just she just sort of it's kind of she just gave the uh, wow the overview. But what I like about where she's going with this is she's absolutely right. If we go back here, at least in my mind, when she talks about U.S., she talks about how ridiculous this whole thing is with this latest executive order, and the the only serious consideration would be legislative proposals that have been for, put forth in Congress. And I don't want to get too controversial yet, Jeff, but you want to know who the person who put together and put out in a bipartisan manner the most comprehensive legislation bill for crypto? I'm not sure who that is, Chip, but I'm sure you'll tell us. Warren Davidson. That's right. And people are crucifying Warren him. Davidson. They're throwing, to they're, they're the torches, the pitchforks out for him because he Man, happens he, to love Bitcoin. He's a, he, loves, he loves the Bitcoin. And if you ever want to hear our first interview with Warren Davidson, go to onthechain.io, go to interviews, type in Warren Davidson, and you can see that interview with uh, Rep. Warren Davidson. Go check it out and tell us what you think after you watch it. Um, but even even during that during that show, I think we saw some little inklings of uh, you know some maximalism, some uh, Bitcoin maximalist you know ideas. Uh, I was going to say ideology, but ideas. But other than that, you know, Chip, you know, it gets crazy because mm -hmm. uh, Friedman, you know, she's bringing up some really solid points. And the idea of Congress, you know, legislating, whoa, real, you know, real amazing notion there that that's what they should be doing. Um, and the fact that you brought up Warren Davidson, I know we'll get into that in more detail. And you're 100 percent spot on the Token Taxonomy Act, despite what some in the community are posting was by far one of the best pieces of crypto legislation put in front of Congress to date. Uh, granted, there were some other aspects that they broke out of the Token Taxonomy Act and tried to present it independently, um, you know, different sections of it mm -hmm. that also didn't get traction. Um, so what does that tell you? 
what does that tell you within the different committees who's running those committees that is not giving it credence that their objective is through executive order or you know cramming some legislation into an infrastructure bill so you guys can't see it how do you like that chip well that's kind of how they do it Jeff. they always cram <laughs> it's always something crammed somewhere right some nook and cranny Cram something and you can bet something's crammed. I want to get in this chris larson so we're gonna like let's 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 kind oh of mini workshop God, this chris larson that chris let's mini larson. workshop this because th this whole thing is it's just chock full of nuts right here there's so much going on there, there is so much in this um and then the the whole tweet storm that mm. he put out there with it in response to uh to warren davidson <laughs> and i think warren davidson's response is good um but let's see what he has to say here because as we get yeah. into his tweets you start seeing a narrative that i think most people weren't expecting and most people probably didn't read all the way through everything no. that he said good point and then he tried to back out of it and you know there's some things here chip that let's workshop it let's go jeff just i'm gonna give my two cents if i'm a billionaire i'm just disappearing i'm just saying right i'd rather be anonymous than get on twitter and make a fool of myself i do that when i'm not a millionaire i don't have to but if i'm like super mega rich i just disappear right if i'm elon musk i don't need to start a new platform for social media because i've already got to, i've got i got starlink i've got you know spacex i've got tesla i don't need to be doing more things unless i'm really working towards so you saying you know, chip hypothetically if you were at the oscars and you were invited up to get an award and someone the person was dempsey was presenting you wouldn't walk up and smack him in the face and no, I I throw a punch him first because <laughs> that's like a better it's a better like uh, look right after. But anyway, we got so last year. By the way, this is Chris Larson tweet storm. Last year, I published an op-ed calling for Bitcoin to consider to move away from proof of work to a low energy validation method. Today, I'd like to share an update on how my thinking has evolved mm. on this front. Uh oh. Now, for <laughs> what? Why is everybody so worried about Bitcoin? I and, don't know, and Jeff. The energy I'm, method. <laughs> I'm not. I don't do you hear care. Bitcoin? Do you hear any of the Bitcoiners out there and the miners saying, you know what? I really wish we had lower energy consumption. Now, in terms of the cost of mining, as energy costs go up and Bitcoin mining potentially goes down or the value fluctuate, I could see people get upset with energy cost and they'll figure it out. But other overall, though, why why is Larson so concerned about it? Well, what Jeff, I, th yeah, I think we kind of know where that's going, but let's just uh, zoom a little bit here. We've got, he says, well, I still can't believe moving to a low energy consensus mechanism believe. is the most climate friendly long-term solution. I recognize it's no easy feat. Hmm. This is when you realize, why am I tweet storming anyway? What, what's the point? Okay. Oh, yeah, what, why did he even get into this, this part of it? You know, so he wants to move to low energy because it's the most climate friendly long-term solution but is it really no i don't know it doesn't matter like i said who's using the excess energy now even with bitcoin mining there's excess energy that's being produced is anybody worried about it not a soul no. jeff not one person today and you know today the u.s hosts uh 40 of the hash rate climate con conscious miners like these were names like uh, Gryphon Mining and Argo Blockchain and Riot Blockchain strive to use 100% renewables and be responsible actors. Responsible to who? Why exactly. are they more responsible? Why, why, and why are they? Why is he using that word? Why does he have to bring in responsible actors? Why does he have to go to a because green leftist narrative? He's trying to explain that everybody else is uh, out of sync, Jeff. That's the whole. They're point. out of sync, and uh, they don't know any better. Out of touch. But the good actors, these are the people that we like because they're, they're doing the renewables. Possible. Hey, terrific. Right. I, I think and, that's and fantastic. They're striving, they're striving to use 100% renewables. Does that's that mean that they are? Now, is it going to be too costly? They shut down the power grids uh, you know, for overload. Now, what, what does this mean? Are they, are they successful, not successful? Are they trying to do something different? And what there is the go. renewable energy they're using? Are they using solar? Well, this is problematic. Are they using huge-ass wind turbines? That, 100%, you, that cause problems? They use 100% carbon-free energy. I don't know what that means. But which energy? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Then Argo Are blockchain, they use, they use mo the world's most profitable cryptocurrencies. I don't know what that means. 
Riot Blockchain, uh, only mining company supporting the Bitcoin blockchain through industrial scale mining in U.S. That's cool. All right. Doesn't say anything. They're not talking so, about themselves being responsible actors or using 100% renewables in their Twitter. Here it is right here. So they shut off the power when the grids are overloaded. I applaud their efforts. Okay. On the other hand, plenty of miners are repurposing old coal and gas plants and not being responsible stewards of the amount of power they're increasingly using. Jacking up energy bills for residents, sucking power from the grid regardless of overload. This is unacceptable. So who is it unacceptable? Why is that unacceptable? Yeah, why is that unacceptable? I don't understand. So they're repurposing old coal and gas plants that are sitting there that they're not being used right now. So they're firing them up. They're yeah. creating, creating their own power. Creating jobs, uh, so they're yeah. generating the power uh, and they're repurposing them and they're mining uh, Bitcoin. And so here they say they're jacking up energy bills for residents. <laughs> I don't I mean, are they are they really? Is that is that really a thing? They're sucking power from the grid regardless of the overload. Now, if, if they are, then the residents will come and say, hey, you know what? We don't like this plant because you're overloading our grid. You know, we don't want you here. You got to figure something out. You can't be on our grid. Build your own grid. <laughs> you know, so at that point, I'm sure people will go to them. You know, is, is that happening or is he just saying that that's happening? I would like evidence of that. Well, this is a good comment. BTC Maxis Larson. Keep my wife's name out of your mouth. <laughs> keep my keep our power out of your mouth. That's what it should say. Yes. Yeah. So efficiently to achieve the objective is to be ridiculed here. What? Okay. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that's been going on crypto Twitter. Some little friendly okay. arguments going back and forth. So this is unacceptable. Oh, I don't I see what he's saying. Apparently, you people are clueless. Larson was a founder of Green Pre Greenpeace. Uh huh. They're clueless. I see where I see where Alchemist is coming from. The time for change oh, is I, now. Matt is saying there's no way you can switch Bitcoin from proof of work. That is literally the only value it has. Correct. Remove that, and Bitcoin has nothing. And right. I think we'll see some commentary on that. I think that's yeah, really good statement. That's a very strong statement, and we're gonna and that's gonna make a lot more sense when we get into the rebuttal here. The time for change is now as prominent capital market participants drive crypto liquidity. ESG and sustainability would only become more front and center. Eat the second largest market cap for now, like how you inserted for now. Uh, recognize this early on and very close to switching to proof of stake. They've been pretty close for six years, Jeff. I mean, pretty close. You know, like pretty close. They're getting there. They're getting there. It's like, you know, ETH 2.0. It's right there. You know, one of those award shows, Jeff, there was a uh, thing where they were shooting the arrow off of the head of the lady and they were pretty close, but they grazed the top of the head. You see what I mean? Like it's pretty close. Doesn't really work after six years. It says we need a short term solution close. as well. Even if we move away from proof of work, it happened eventually. Bitcoin is and will largely remain hugely important for crypto globally. Bitcoiners, I know many of you may not believe this. But I'm not trying to work against you here. Now, so <laughs> and so as as multiple people, including you know Matt, brought up you know the idea of moving Bitcoin away from proof of work, and there's going to be some other commentary as to why that proof of work is the security of the Bitcoin network. Uh, and now here he's saying that he's not trying to work against everybody. I don't see him coming up with a uh, a solution. I don't see him coding into it other than just complaining and trying to make it sound like those that are mining are upsetting the balance of power, actual power, like electric power. There is, you know, people that are mining are upsetting the grid and they're using more than what they should be allotted and they're causing grief to everybody around them. And that's kind of the statement that he's making. That's right. Close and close is only good enough for hand shoes. <laughs> it's right. It's like, and sometimes it an <laughs> has some detrimental effects. And also, as Matt saying here too, saying, uh, uh, where was it? Oh gosh, You're right there. Are you looking? No. What's that, Jeff? Yes, they no. are. Look what happened in Kazakhstan. Literally, what happened? They kicked the miners out. See you. There you go. You're done. And that's exactly what happened. That? The work they, is done. And they said, "We're done. We're done with you." But look at the Ted's life. Then I've complained three times about my neighbor mining Bitcoin. It's really loud. I can hear it in the middle of the night. So what your neighbor should do is put soundproofing 
up and around the room that he has the uh, mines in. And there you go. Problem yeah. solved. My aunt sent me a video. Uh, she's in Western New York. Line. She's in Western New York and she just went out on the porch and and the Bitcoin facilities across there and you just, it's really loud. So I can get the noise pollution part of it. You got to keep those a lot of got to keep that equipment. And that's pitch. upsetting if, if you got residential around there, Chip. Yeah, I get it. Look at this. So Matt says, Matt Hamilton, all the Bitcoin maxis have nailed their flags to the proof of work mast. There's no way they would support the switch away from proof of work. Exactly. And what do you know? All this that. bickering and fighting. I think the la the way we're headed right now, I think 20 or 2042 or 2044. We're basically 20 years away from the last Bitcoin block in mind. I mean, it's like we're, we're almost and over the last 20 years, we're going to try to make it different, better, this, that. It doesn't matter. Whole Here thing you is go. Here. To me. Here's a good comment, too, from Mr. Wolf. The irony is that Chris Larson probably holds more Bitcoin than most of the people attacking. Jeff, I said, and that's probably and I, spot on. You said that. <laughs> I said he has more. I, I said I, I assert he has more more Bitcoin than Sailor. I bet he has more Bitcoin than almost everybody. I mean, Jeff and I were I like laughing about that earlier. A, a huge nest egg. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, today's crypto been around the block. Yeah, today's crypto is blessed with incredible talent, unlimited capital, and on a mission to make the world better. That's great, but there's there's no reason to change Bitcoin. What if miners were incentivized to remove carbon from the atmosphere? Incentivized how? They, they, the whole reason of proof of work is the fact that there's a reward, right? I mean, the fact that the value is going up and every four years you get that happening. I mean, okay. And what's the climate this, problem, Chip? What if so miners really were incentivized to turn this climate problem into a solution? <laughs> Jeff, how do you remove carbon from the atmosphere? I mean, I guess the, the Bitcoin miners in 2042 will figure this out because somehow they'll be incentivized. 2050. Miners pledging 100% green energy, a great startup, but in my opinion, not a foolproof long-term solution. Dude, we're talking about 20 years here. It's not a long time. But uh, what's to stop a petrol state like Russia from liquidating fossil fuel reserves? Th this whole thing is, well, you missed some critical statement there. He said, because... Proof of work simply incentivizes finding the cheapest energy. So I don't understand what he's saying here. Um, it incentivizes finding the cheapest energy, not what is the right thing to do. So you want to find that. the cheapest area of energy, not necessarily. But what does he mean by the right thing to do? And what about geothermal power? So at some point, yes, mining Bitcoin could be too expensive. So then the mining operations might go to Iceland. You know, if Oscar's on, then, you know, Iceland becomes the beneficiary because of geothermal power. Or they go to El Salvador or they go to, you know, some volcano near you. I'm not sure. Uh, but if they do have to find the cheaper solution. And so, yes, right. And that's what incentivizes them. So whatever that might be. And why does it have to be, you know, 100 percent gray? I guess geothermal is pretty, pretty green. You know, if we're going to talk about that. Right. I like that. I can get on board with that if it's all about the geothermal. but. He wants to force people to change away from proof of work. Well, where I grew up, Jeff, in Western it. New York, they've got, you know, the uh, Niagara Falls. There's a whole power plant there. It's just from, it's hydropower. So hydropower is super massively clean. So like hydropower, there's there's all kinds of different powers. Look at it. What about in the Midwest up here in the U.S. where they were using the, the gas burnoff from the oil wells? That was basically energy that was unused, and then they turned it into power for bitcoin mining mm -hmm. so you know he says even with responsible players jeff not those irresponsible again, players. again responsible players <laughs> so man you know the, the problem with this whole narrative that he's putting out there is that he's putting his ideological spin and twist and he's weaving it into this entire narrative and he's not staying true to crypto he's weaving in something else and so it's not you know so his attack and shot across the bow of bitcoin has another agenda you know it has okay. nothing to do with what's best for bitcoin or those that hold it even though he's a huge holder of it i wonder what percentage at that point is you know and, and how significant is it does it have any meaning at this point you know he's he's invested about 90 million dollars into you know green energy uh solutions no i think now, do you think, just out of curiosity, Jeff, do you think that Ripple needed a new reason for it to be more, even more hated by Bitcoin maxis when you got the, when you got, you know, one of the uh, upper management of Ripple, the chairman, isn't he the chairman? What is he over there? 
I don't know what his official yeah, title is. The executive, is. executive chairman. The chairman is now going after Bitcoin. I mean, like it's just, it's crazy. If you've read this far, thanks. I've spent one and a half years thinking about possible solutions, invested nearly 90 million in the climate change fighting yeah. efforts. And I can guarantee I you that for that $90 million, change, let's talk about the nothing. real thing. You got, get, nothing. got nothing. Not don't you get nothing, Zero. but what, what did you do? You could have invested $90 million into you know, crypto businesses that would have taken off, something along the lines of that. $90 million in the climate change friendly fighting efforts. Let's what see the results from that. I don't know. What does that mean? Is he, you know, flying? By the way, I'm fighting it. Plane? I'm fighting it right now. So where's my, I'll take a million. <laughs> So there it is. But at least, at least, and XRP panic said, good for him. At least he's putting his money where his mouth is. A lot of these people run around and spew all sorts of nonsense, and yet they won't put a dime into it. He's See, invested 90 million of his of his hard-earned dollars into it. But I have to give Chris Larson props on this last panel here, because he says, lastly, I want to emphasize that these efforts are mine alone. While I still am the chairman of Ripple, the company is not involved in this campaign. On that note, apologies to the Ripple communication team the ripple comms team and so he knows the kind of damage it's probably going to be you know the incoming that's going to happen as a result of his uh tirade but you know listen i mean the guy's open to do it's a free country do whatever you want i just don't know if it's a battle you want to pick i'd rather you spend 90 million dollars trying to figure out some other problems like there's parts of the world that don't have clean drinking water that's a right. that's a valuable they're that they're, would be they're, they're, they're going like in that. they're drilling wells there's a company out there that I see that go into a village. They drill this amazing well deep enough to where they can pump water and they don't have to rock four miles. That to me you is know, a noble effort. Jeff, you know what you could do with $90 million? Dig a lot of wells, Jeff. With fresh, fresh drinking water. I mean, whole, you know, this this is one of the problems when you get, you know, getting in, into this uh, ideological kind of, uh, you know, spin is that they focus on things that won't, and don't really have a true impact on people, you know, and it might be some, you know, so anyhow, I mean, we can, we can get into that whole debate, but Chip, you do know that, uh, so Warren Davidson, um, had a few choices. Yeah, well, I have the, I have that up here. Responded. You got that tweet up already? I got it ready to go. Yeah. So Matt Hamilton, Bitcoin oh, needs energy to be expensive or rare in order to work. We suddenly get mm -hmm. a cheaper energy supply than Bitcoin. Difficulty level just raises to compensate. It sucks up all the energy around. Good point. There you go. Well, there you go. Matt knows. He sure does. I was looking through some of these other comments. All right. So now so drinking water is a more noble effort. Yeah. I think so too. I think more reasonable people that, you know, are on what did he say? What did he call people? Um, uh, responsible actors, Jeff. Re yeah, Re responsible yeah. actors. Responsible actors, if they want to be uh, stewards in the world, would focus their attention on helping people with fresh drinking water, putting Jeff, shoes under on kids' feet, making sure that they're well fed. Start start with that first, and then once China and India and some of the others out there actually get on board with this whole, you know, <laughs> stop polluting the environment thing. Um, let's just uh, do what's good for the people. Help exactly. People. Yeah. Hey, you think what do you think the uh, what do you think the shot chance of us getting Chris Larson on the podcast is? Very high at this uh, point. on a scale of no or no. <laughs> I think it's very high. We just need to reach out and ask him. I think so. I think we're almost. He's not there. the kind of guy that's afraid to. Uh, the no, I mean no, but that's it. The whole thing is like he just talk it out. I mean. So he talks. So this his whole tweet thread was quote was quoted by That's none other than Congress uh, Congressman Warren Davidson, and he said, "In other words, please ban Bitcoin." No, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right? I mean, but I mean, in a sense, I mean, it's kind of even what Matt was saying. It's like, look, this the whole idea of proof of work is Bitcoin. There's no you don't if you fundamentally change how it works. Like, like even what Matt said, it doesn't work anymore. So in a way, uh, he's kind of right. In other words, please ban Bitcoin. But again, does Warren Davidson, who, who you know, he, he his, if you had to guess what his favorite coin was out there, I'm sure it's going to be Bitcoin. So he says no. And then he goes on to say that if not in statute with coercion, mm. if you don't see an attack on proof of work as an attack on Bitcoin, you understand neither. It's an attack on the fundamental architecture Solana offers proof of history as a distinctive alternative. Numerous others offer proof of stake. But of Man. course, there's, there's uh, XRP as, as well. 
Yeah. Warren yeah. David's coming out strong, coming but out strong with his knowledge base of uh, how crypto well, works. Exactly. That. And so, so I mean, I would have, I would have preferred to have given XRP since he was just talking about Lars, but that's okay. So how integral is proof of work to Bitcoin? It's in its abstract. It's in the abstract of the white paper. Of course it is right there. Purely peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash, allow online payments to be sent directly to one party, blah, 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 blah. We don't get the whole thing. That talks about CPU powder, power, yeah. powder. It really right, gets just, into the whole notion of, you know, what it means to have proof of work. It is it is all proof of work. <laughs> the longest chain not only serves... Scroll back up. Oh, sorry. I was, getting into, some, I was getting into some other stuff there. Uh, it says here that... Uh, the longest chain not only serves as proof of the sequence of events witnessed, but proof that it came from the largest pool of CPU power. As long as the majority of CPU power is controlled by nodes that are not cooperating to attack the network, they'll generate the longest chain and outpace attackers. The network itself requires minimal structure. So you get into this idea and you understand that this whole Bitcoin is proof of work. Proof of work is Bitcoin. So if you try to change it and then you see... You know, you get Bitcoin Cash, you get all these other Bitcoin chips that have spun off of it. Yeah, and Bitcoin I've always chip. Bitcoin chips. Big chip is good. Bitcoin is bit so bit chip. I like that. Bit, bit chip. So, <laughs> so I've always so uh, as I've read, you know, you look at the white paper. Satoshi wrote the white paper. I've always asserted and thought that at the time, Satoshi was a, mu a much older individual in 2009. It was probably put together in 2008, 2009 ish. And the reason I say that is because modern word processors and the, the modern age of computing does not require two spaces. Typewriters did require two spaces. Anytime mm. you had a spice after the sentence, you had hit two spaces. But people that were trained or are much older and they're typing on a, on, a, on a computer, they hit two spaces, which puts this extra space in here. You can see right here uh, between structure and messages. So it was, an, it was somebody that was older that was trained yeah. probably... 80s or 70s um, at a younger age. So that's how you, you think you find... learned on a typewriter on a old school computer. I'm just saying, but even, well, even the old school computers, but it's somebody that's older, Jeff. This wasn't a younger person that wrote this because you, you, you know, if you even look back, let's say mm. to the 90s, if somebody, you wouldn't say it was a younger person, it was an older person. That's just, yeah, that, my, that's a good point. I thinking. started typing probably, you know, in the 90s, maybe late 80s, but early I, 90s. But the, you will run across I people. I didn't learn to double 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 space like that. No, but but that's yeah. what you learned when it was earlier. I see a lot of uh, mm. older folks to do the double space, puts that, the extra carrot, put the extra sleuthing. space in there. That's some ah. really solid sleuth in there, Chip. There you go. No one, no one has brought. That's real sleuthing. That's real investigative it's it's thought just, process. It's, it's no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've always looked at no. it, and, I, and it's always bugged the hell out of me as a visual person, as a former creative director. It just bugs the hell out of me when I see the double space. There we go. <laughs> There you go, Matt. Oh, let's see. Matt was born in '77, and even I was trained to double space at the end Not of the, in the '90s, man. In the '90s, you were. Yeah, but it was '90s UK, so it's it's different than '90s US. All right, so let's figure out how old Matt is. Okay, '87, '97, 2007, He's 44, 17, 46. Okay, 44. And 44. You, she's 44 years old right there. I just gave it away, man. See, this is 44. weird. Double space at the end of a sentence. I haven't seen that. I, I, that's crazy talk, man. It's weird. Well, a lot of my viewers and people younger than me. 72 babies, double space. There you go. I'm man. telling you, the IRS. Oh, no. You're, this whole notion has fallen apart. <laughs> Dr. Blazer was born in 82 in double spaces. Incorrect. It's incorrect, but Dr. Blazer, man. what country? Yeah, what country are you in, man? Oh, that's the uh, that's the local one. No, man, I'm telling you. I, oh, I, oh, you know what? Maybe they learned from an older person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, cause back in the 90s, even going back to the 90s, you could do that. And here we go. So Satoshi was probably educated <laughs> at some British university now. There you go. They see how we're like, you see how we're like zooming in on this, Jeff? Right. We're getting this now. We're getting it done. Yeah. So there was all that double spacing is tree killing. There you go. See those old those old typewriters. Man. So you need to use common sense typing. I like Jungle's statement here. He says, uh, I'm starting to like you more and more by the day, Congressman Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> got, so he's got he's oh, got yeah. the meme, which is from the 
from the Oscars when uh, we had the famous slap down. But yeah, so it's Bitcoin slapping Chris Larson. <laughs> And just as, I mean, there's so much stuff going on here. I'll always speak the truth, even when I'm popular. I'm sure oh. our roads will cross again. Well, that's kind of how this podcast goes. We just speak our truths. <laughs> that's it. So what did uh, Chris Larson say? He said it's exactly, this is exact oh. opposite of what I'm advocating his, for. I hope his response to, to, yeah, uh, to Davidson. To Davidson. He goes, the exact opposite of what I'm advocating for. I hope Bitcoin. I want it to be successful in the future. I'm being pragmatic about what's going on when ETH completes the switch. Bitcoin's the outlier of energy use. Again, mm. so so what? don't use ETH as the example until it's successful. Yeah, I mean, I, after six years, I'm not, I don't know what he has their hopes up. And what's wrong with these highly intelligent people? I just I don't know. Where and the I'm starting to lose is. some faith. I don't know what a second part of that is. And Tony said, uh, Chris, let's set up an interview to talk about. By the way, in any long tweet thread. You will find Tony chiming in, not pro or con the other way, like, hey, man, let's set up an interview. Like, I, I'm always like through tweet threads. I see Tony, let's set up an interview, which is a great approach. Like, you're like, yeah, let's set up an interview, man. I'm pissed. You want to go rally against it? Better to talk about this on video than versus Twitter. Yeah, because it's way more entertaining for us to watch and pick that apart the video. So it's, All can, right, we make it, can we make it happen? I like that. Ani is saying, uh, the written word requires double spacing at the end of a sentence as a break for the I. You are wrong. You are incorrect. First of all, <laughs> modern modern programs like Microsoft Word, anything, they automatically, after a space, add an additional space. It's not two spaces, though. Mm -hmm. And if you study topography, like uh, oh. I spent a lot of time studying topography, everything in and out, that is incorrect. Back in the day, you had to, to separate it, but double space is too much. Mm -hmm. But it's really a space and a half. Yeah. Is what you your look, argument is. Yeah, just type something up. You'll notice that th th you put a space. Now now we're getting out of water. control. Now we're getting out of control with this commentary over here, Chip. What is going Man. You wrote the token. See, the, and again, what we're doing right here is we're getting into some real dis disrespectful territory. Okay. The one person who's done the most as far as putting forth bipartisan, not one side or the other, it came together. Jeff, you pointed this out the other night. There's equal sponsors on this. He's like, uh, Warren Davidson, you wrote the Token Taxonomy Act with a member of the Ethereum Enterprise Ethereum Allowance and are guilty of extortion to that oh, year. Come on, man. So al that's alleging, alleging uh, on a U.S. senator, zero proof, all conjecture, mostly BS. And, and this is sad. I mean, I, I love mostly what Tag does. I disagree with him vehemently on the way he's handled this. It seems like Out a of very... Control. It's it's, it's it's null and void of any critical thinking. It's, it's out of sad. control at this point. <laughs> now now he's just doing it for the sensationalism of it, and it's it's unfortunate. It really is. And know? even XRP Darren, did you read what he wrote? I gave you the benefit of the doubt with tweeting an XRP scam. Twisting and contorting words demonstrates intent. This but is like even like people that I like really respect. They're off the rails, man. Dictator, which is uh, know it all. Saying he's a bad apple, and that's this from the check this and out. Now, from now what he's nice. Think of that. Appreciate K. Hud. He says, K. Hud. Beauty is in the eye of the holder. Hell yeah, it is. That's right. It always has been and always will be to the end of time. Solid point. Space and a half, Jeff. Are you effing psycho? <laughs> Do it, man. I'm serious. Check it out. Do a double space and compare it. Write a line and you open up Word or anything. Put a line now. Put a one space. Put another one. We're we'll have to like demonstrate this, Jeff. I'm telling you. All right, pull up. But one of the, it's see. been one of my pet peeves forever and a day. You got Lionel saying he's a bad apple. A bad apple. The one guy that put the for it the best. And first of all, Jeff, who was it written by that used to be his aide, uh, Warren Davidson? Ron Hammond. Ron Hammond wrote it. If you want to, if you don't believe me, go look at Ron Hammond's Twitter profile. He wrote the token taxonomy. Back in the day, and by the way, if anyone wants to know how Jeff and I met, it's because mostly I would say of a video that Jeff was in touch with Ron Hammond, who was then working for Warren Davidson, wanted the community to put together a video. And Jungle Inc. participated in it. Uh, Crypto Eddie participated in it. Uh, Jeff and I were in it. And they wanted something to be able to show Congress. that. Con and this is what, three years ago? Yeah, it was a solid video. Jeff and I were in a Twitter DM group. 
in the Twitter DM group. Jeff put that on on Friday and said, hey, does anybody want to do this? I said, I'm game. Let's do it. I said, when's it due? He said, Monday morning. So, <laughs> so that was it. Jeff and I got to know each other that weekend. We said, why don't we combine our efforts? And that's how – that's right there. You guys want to know the basis? There you go, Chip. There's your proof. This is a test space, period. This is a test, period, space. Look where the F falls. Beyond the dot. Yeah, There's but you can't proof, do it with Chip. a dot. Put this is a test, period, and then do a double space F. That would be the more appropriate. Oh, you want one. another one? All right, no, no. So let's do another one. This is a test, and then this is a test. Yeah, period, space, space, F. Now, if you notice... Now, you look, that's a space, period. That's a space after a period. Well, that's because a letter... A extension. Right, the letter is going to give it a little bit more. Why that's maybe my, even put a dot there? Look. Okay. There you go. Yeah, but it's with Not the letter, though. But it's when you put Dude. a letter... I know, but it uh, here's the letter. But the point is, is that even here, it spaces it's, it further out. Yeah, it, but if you put a letter, that's that's why you see a little bit more space, but not a double yeah, space. Even more space. You'd have more space right. here. But my I point double is, space. The point I is, is that space space. all modern it's word processors on. typing yeah. give you a little bit more space than a regular yeah than a regular space. With your next, it doesn't matter, dot or letter. Look, lined up. Here's its space. There you go. Your point is know. well taken. It's a space Done. and a half. There you go. Space and a half. Hear that, Matt? Just saying. <laughs> so, this is a test dot space space f. Space space f. And it puts this massive space in there. Anyway, that, that goes back to the typewriter. That's where all this came from. It's called legacy. Da, 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 da. Leftovers. Yeah, that's interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Legacy typewriters. So there we go. Uh, just a, so tag says, just a reminder. Here's Warren Davidson, surrounded by members of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. He said there was a Ripple. He said there was Ripple representation there, but he's probably Ron Hammond, who's no longer works for Ripple. He's in bed with Ethereum. This whole stuff is just what? bizarre to me. That's just, <laughs> There's something wrong, yeah. man. That's out of control. You know, I, I, yeah. So, by the way, he doesn't yeah. even realize that Ron Hammond is who wrote. By the way, thank you for that tag. Appreciate that. Let's look at this here. Let's see if we can get this in. Author of the Token this Taxonomy Act, son, right there. Former rep, former uh, rep Warren Davidson, and contributor Hoddle Pack. And so, why is he saying he said there was a there was r Ripple representation there, but it was probably Ron Hammond, who no longer works for Ripple. But if he got his facts right, like you just said, Ron Hammond actually worked for. Warren Davidson, and there you go, author of the Token Taxonomy Act. There you go. And it was, and, and the thing is, is that what, what everybody's failed to do, Jeff, is actually read the bill. Read the bill. There's no they well. Read the bill. All of the all, all of the cryptocurrency, the except for ETH, because the Ethereum Alliance was part of it. There's none of that in there. It's a very well drafted and, and yeah. well done. And if anything, <laughs> you would have more respect for the Ethereum Alliance if they did, in fact, oversee it. <laughs> Big, huge, massive crypto news. You guys are nerds. We, pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. Guilty as charged. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, we're like, like look at how we're like, so we're over analyzing everything. After we just talked about a space and a half after the period. Yeah, this reminds me right. when you posted a fake article without reading it. That's the bearable bull, dude. I mean, it's Wait, getting, what uh, then JV says, uh, Warren Davidson's the same man that fell for a scam. Like all of a sudden, Jeff, you know what the cool thing about going to Congress is? Is you never make a mistake. You would never fall for a scam email. Ever. You Ever. just will be perfect. You will be like, Ding. in like, every way. When you smile, there'll be a little bling on your teeth and your eyes. Bling. You just be perfect. I mean, like, do, what are these people, superhumans? They're just people, man. They're just people that got elected to an office. It's like, it's just bizarre to me, man. Man, it's out of control. And so he happens to like uh so he happens to like Bitcoin. Who cares? But to attack the guy who single-handedly, well, I was just single handed, but with a group of people put together something great. I mean, come on, it's a fantastic. But that's the thing. So they they here's here's the the chaos of it. I, I don't care. You know, you know, we can debate where Warren Davidson, you know, putting out the tweet uh, and forwarding the tweet that was inaccurate. He deletes it, pulls it back. You know, there's other ways of going about, you know, dealing with, you know, a congressional representative if you have an opinion mm -hmm. and blasting and making up stuff and trying to connect dots that may or may not be there. Um, and then showing pictures of people in a meeting and then tying it 
back to the Ethereum Foundation and then making all these, uh, you know, accusations. It's just wrong, you know, and that it's just, just not the way things, you know, should be handled. Uh, you know, then, and we talked about this already, you know, a couple of days in a row, but, and then, you know, say immediately <laughs> going and saying, well, let's support whoever the uh, person that's going to be running against him, you know? So here, here's the person that Warren Davidson has done more for cryptocurrency in general in the space. Forget about, again, he might be a Bitcoin maxi, might Who be cares? an Ethereum maxi. Who cares? Who cares? His legislation is spot on. He didn't try to cram in some hidden agenda into the infrastructure bill. He's tried to stop it. He didn't, right. you know, look at the executive order and say, it's amazing. You know, he was against it, but he did say we need positive crypto legislation. So that's and it. foster and innovation all day long and foster, and foster innovation. innovation. So that's, that's what you're not going to hear out of the other side because the other side's the one with the, the, exact with the torches opposite. and pitchforks that are going after it. And you can see it in every opposite. level of this administration. Anyway, Jeff, before we close, I wanted to end on this tweet, which I thought was interesting. Rob Licker says, respectfully, Warren Davidson, I don't think Chris Larson is saying ban Bitcoin, nor is Ripple. Given that you're a policymaking position, perhaps giving him a call would have been a better than this tweet. Will his suggestion work? Probably zero chance that Bitcoin ever moves. This is how you, this is, this is an adult writing, you know, uh, this, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's respectful, right? Hey, maybe a phone call would have been a better thing. This is a responsible actor right here, Jeff. Um, yeah. <laughs> responsible. But anyway, that's all the time we have guys. Um, gosh, where did the time go? I see every, I, see, I always see towards the end, everybody start bailing off and peeling right, off. Right, but thank right, you right. for the 116 faithful. Yeah, that's you. The ones that are I'm still here. Right to the end. Thank you. You know who you are. Appreciate it. And guys, that's all we have for tonight. Isn't it true, Jeff? That is true. Go to onthechain.io. Check it out. You'll see when we stream. You guys already know if you're here, you know we stream six days a week. Go check out the interview with Warren Davidson. Go there listen go. to it. Go check out the one with Tom Emmer too because uh, Tom Emmer's great. see two congressional representatives that are truly, truly passionate about cryptocurrency and it's not just a Me Too movement. They're not just doing it to get votes because they're already elected and they have a true passion for cryptocurrency. Go check it out. And then we can talk more about it tomorrow night. You guys can bring in whatever opinion and thought process. Yeah. You would all, like. everything's welcome here. It's a free speech zone. Guys. See that Jeff and his co-host rock. Yeah. That'd be me. Thanks, Simon. Simon. All right, guys, that's it. We will see you on the next one. Chip and Jeff, Jeff and out. out. Are you down with OTC? Please like subscribe and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.